Hey all, I thought I'd try and make a bit of a build uh, out of some junk I've got lying around since um, at the moment the wind's up and weather's not great for flying so you know you get the bug to want to do something in the hobby so this is my um, the remnants of my Quantum Nova that's the flight controller board and uh, the four ESCs um, previously I did a video a while back um, I've got a Reptile 500 frame and I took the flight controller out of the Quantum Nova and the motors off it and decided to transplant that into the Reptile 500 frame which it worked to a certain extent but could only run on 3S battery I wasn't happy with that so I've decided now what I'm going to do is keep the motors at the moment and upgrade this, the ESCs from these ones here on the um, Quantum Nova to some 35 amp ESCs I've got in a Oh, I did have in another old race drone. I've also got lying around a, um, a KK2 board which I've never actually used. I've had it for years and it's just been collecting dust so I thought oh, I might try that. It's, uh, it's not going to have the GPS functions that the APM had. Um, the APM that I did have on it is now in my Tundra so that's being used in that and it works quite well. So this is just going to be a Frankenstein type of build where I'm just going to be adding parts what I can find just to get it up in the air and see how it runs on 4S. So to start with I've got a uh, Matek power distribution board lying around here that um, I'm going to use um, and that's going to power the KK2 board uh, the ESCs as well. These are just uh, Rockstar 35 amp ESCs so the power distribution board has a built-in buzzer as well, which will be good for low battery warnings. So that's the Reptile frame. I've got a part here at the moment. So I've got the LEDs from the, from the Nova on the front, which will indicate and flash when I've got a low battery warning. And the four motors off the Quantum Nova on there as well, left from the previous build. So what we're going to do now is, is do a lot of the electronics. We'll wire up the Matek power board and do some testing and connect up the KK2 board and, and take it for a bit of a flight. So basically all I'm doing here I'm just going to be making some making a bit of a wiring harness here for the ESCs using uh, just some spare wire I've got. I'm not going to be too fancy with it at all and um, some uh, servo plugs so the idea this plug here that plugs into the uh, power distribution board here that will power the, the KK2 board. So I need to make I need to make three another three cables here for um, each of the other remaining channels. So because the the power is being um, sourced from channel one, I don't need any power cables from channels two, three, and four. So I'll take them out and all we'll have is negative and the signal wire so I'm just extending the the wires that are coming out of the ESC's I'll do the four of them so that's basically it complete my basic wiring harness with the PDB and um, four ESC's attached to it so this is my plate I'm going to be sitting the KK2 board on. It's just a lid out of a, out of a plastic container. And the um, power distribution board will just sit in the middle of that, just like this. With the wires separating and the KK2 board will sit above. So I'll put a little bit of foam down just to try and take out a little bit of vibration. And I'll just use double sided tape just to stick the PDB board to the to the foam backing so with the power power distribution board in place it's time to work on the KK2 board and connect that to install the KK2 board I'm going to use uh, some tall standoffs that I've had lying around in a toolbox and they will produce enough height for the KK2 board to to clear the the power distribution board and all the wires soldered to it yeah, the, the board will be uh, secured by uh, nuts onto the standoffs and it's now basically ready just to be powered up and hooked up and programmed. 
So there's my basic wiring setup. It's ready to go into the Reptile 500. All I need to source now is a receiver. I'll mount all my electrics on top with this. The good thing with the KK2 board, you can program it in the field. It's got a LED display which lets you um, tune basically while you're out in the field. So I'm just putting some hot glue down now for the backing plate just to stick it all down. So that's it. We'll um, connect up the motors and install a receiver. Give it a bit of a test run. I'm not too particular which way I've got the wiring for, to the motors. Anything that needs reversing it's just a matter of switching two wires around um, so the motors are spinning in the correct, correct way. As you tune the KK2 board it will show you in the LED which way each motor should be spinning all depending on which model you choose to program into it. So while, while I'm wiring this up I can see I've connected up the power to channel 2 on the KK2 board which is incorrect. The KK2 board needs to get its power from channel 1 so that power cable, the red power cable going into channel 2 needs to be transferred across into channel 1 or it won't power up. So now that I've worked that out, I've, you can see I've taken the red wire now from channel 2 and it's now in channel 1 and the KK2 board will power. So the, uh, the receiver I'm using is an FR Sky V8R7. So now that it's powered on, we go into the menu and um, we've got to go down to load layout and select quadcopter or quad x for this particular model and that'll program a set of default pids and settings for this craft ready to be tuned once it's in the air so here i need to make four more wires up for the receiver channel one channel two channel three channel four run and i'll need to do a channel five i, I believe too um, I've only got the four here at the moment, but they'll be going from the KK2 board to the receiver. Channel five is your auxiliary switch. You need to um, assign that. That's basically for your um, your stabilized or non-stabilized flight. Uh, you can just alter that with a switch. Just like that, that's how the four of them uh, ended up. So the receiver channel um, is set up where you have roll as channel 1, pitch channel 2, throttle channel 3, uh, yaw is channel 4 and auxiliary switch for channel 5. Another nice thing with this frame it gives you the option at the front there just to mount a GoPro or an action camera for a bit of flight footage. So that's basically everything all ready to go now and test flight. We'll um, power it up in a minute and you know, make sure everything's happy and we'll take it out into the backyard and just see how it hovers. So I'm here with the Reptile, I've got it all pieced together. So I've got a 5000 milliamp battery on it uh, and I'm going to just give it a bit of a test and just see how we fly with it uh, just around here. I'm not going to do too much because I don't have return to home and I uh, don't know what to expect to be honest and I don't want to land it in the long cane, sugar cane over in there. So I just had to do a little bit of, a little bit of tuning so I just took the props off for that reason. These, um, I'm just using carbon fibre props, which I used to use on a Phantom 3. They're not actual DJI props, but they're um, pretty well. They're a bit noisy though, N noisier than the white plastic props. But they're self-tightening, so that's the main thing. Okay, let's see how she goes. I'm not going to go too crazy with it because, um, like I said, it's got no posi position hold. It's got no return to home, so I don't want to have to go and pick it up. Um, Anywhere over there in the middle of the long cane fields. Very old board now. But not a bad board for um, what it does. Just make sure this stuff's out of the way. I don't want it getting chopped up in the props. Let's see how we go. Alright, so to arm this, you need to have the throttle down and to the right. And you'll hear a beep. I'm just going to stick it into self-level mode here. It seems 
seems to be good. Keep it moving. Got a bit of power to it. One minute. It's got a little bit of speed to it. Okay, it drifts along, it's just hovering here, letting the wind move it. Well, I think what we'll do is bring it back. That seemed to cut out then. I don't know what happened, but we'll um, bring it back on this side. I don't know what happened there. There was a little bit of a brown out there, I think. It looked like it cut out. It was a bit of a scary moment. I don't know if you saw that on the camera or not. I've got a low battery warning lights. They'll flash when it starts to get low, so I'll just keep it around here for a little bit. Four well, that seems pretty good. Other than that brown out, I don't know what was going on there. I might just bring it back and we'll have a look at it. Five minutes. And that's disarmed, so how are battery temperatures? Let's see what the ESCs are like. They're only 30 amp ESCs, but they're not hot, they're not even warm really. Motors are good. They're not even warm either, so it seems like a pretty good package. And um, what's our voltage? It's showing that we've got 15.5 volts. So it's starting to get a bit low. We've only done five minutes. I did do a hover test and it lasted about 10. We'll do a um, accelerometer calibration. Um, well, it's on the ground here again. So with this, it's a good thing about this. The good thing about this um, KK2 board, you can calibrate, you can tune all on the field, having to worry about a, um, a laptop or a computer. Okay, so that's done. That's a bit better. And it does hover pretty good. It's stable, very stable. And there it goes. So just a little bit of throttle now and it, it's flashing. So what well, we'll come in now, we'll come in and land it. I'd say it's fairly successful. Only real doubt I had was that little brown out feel that I've seen over near the tree over there. I'm not too sure what happened there, but other than that, it was it flew pretty good. It flew perfect. So we're down to 14.9 volts with the battery. I have the I have the lights flash at the front here. So these two lights will flash when it gets down to about 14.6. So yeah, that's pretty good. Anyway, guys, that's about that for the maiden for this Reptile 500 KK2. Frankenstein quad. Hope you enjoyed that and um, have a bit of fun doing this at the same time. Until then, 
keep flying and stay safe and bye for now.